Hey guys, it's Jay Babs. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can use layers to improve your painting. I'll be using this painting here to demonstrate. And by the end of this video, you'll see how I leverage layers to get to this spot. Now, if you're wondering about when you should be using layers correctly, the short answer is whenever you want. It just depends on what your goals are. If your goals are to improve your painting skills, likely you'll want to stick to one layer for as long as you can. This helps with learning how to fix the painting as you go along. As you can see in this case, I've stuck to one level and I'm only now going to add layers as I want to start introducing some lighting to this painting. This is going to give me a lot of flexibility with what kind of light I use, what color temperature the light is, how much of an intensity the light has. And having that control on the layer level gives me a ton of flexibility to experiment. But it's really important to answer that question first. What do you want to improve with layers? If it's your painting skill and your speed, it's much better to stay on one layer for as long as possible. Sometimes it's better to just spend a whole study in one layer since that's the most accurate way to represent real world scenario where the pressure is high and you need to correct the painting in order to make it right. That being said, everything else is fair game really. The beauty about self-expression, especially in the form of art, is that you get to decide what tools you use, what techniques you use, as long as you are able to get some kind of results that speak to what your intention is. So here I'm opening a new layer to create the extreme highlight or key light, if you will, from the right side of the painting. You'll see me hide and unhide it there because I'm trying to monitor how intense the light is. By having it on the separate layer, I can do things like changing the color even of a specific key light using the hue and saturation scale. I have this flexibility because it's, it's an expression. It's whatever light I want the painting to have. And I'll, I'll show you how I explore that a little bit more as this painting goes. Here I'm just establishing some of the lights and shadows. I'm establishing my docks, making sure that those things are in place before I go ahead and add some more light. Here I'm thinking about adding some detail to the character, maybe adding some tattoos or some scarring, or just something to make it interesting. And with this as well, it's ideal for it to be on a new layer because these are not things I want to commit to. In addition, the, those additional details are sitting on top of the skin. So I can choose to remove them or erase them much later into the painting without having to re-render the skin. Now I'm starting to experiment with the light and how I want to indicate cool tones versus warm tones and make this a much more dynamic painting. This is a technique that is actually also used in traditional painting and you would gently glaze over an already rendered section with a very light hue and it's usually to add some tint to the painting and it can really be done for whatever seems appropriate. In this case, we're using it to determine the cool and warm areas on this character, whereas it can be used for things like translucent objects, maybe glass material, maybe blouses or curtains, and glazing over them with a tint of light adds to that perception of translucency. Now, while this is a very learned skill in traditional painting, layers can actually make this a lot easier. However, being easy doesn't necessarily mean it's correct. It's easy to paint something and turn up the opacity or turn down the opacity. 
it's not easy however to have that opacity be the right levels in relation to its environment and that's what I'm playing with here you can see me trying new colors as well just to see I like to experiment as much as I can just to make sure I definitely don't want to come back and revisit this so I I get all of the thoughts out during the painting before I get to a final state or a state I'm happy to continue pushing. I'm doing a lot of thinking here. I'm also playing with the background of the painting. I'm seeing how the background light affects the intensity of the already established light. Doing this all with layers and also tweaking the type of layer, whether it's a multiplayer layer, an overlayer, a soft light layer, it helps me to bring out as many possibilities as I can. And even at this stage, I'm still going back to my original painting layer to continue pushing the painting. I'm keeping most of the detail in this original layer because I don't really need to add a new layer to, to paint with this. And because I've been painting on one layer for so long, I'm actually more comfortable with pushing more of the rendering on the original layer rather than rendering on top of the original layer. This helps me to feel like the painting is moldable and and there, there's not an underlying layer that's been established and I can't use the eraser tool. Now there are some techniques where you can paint on top of your layer and use that to almost mask out areas underneath where it's working as a subtractor in that case but for me I find it a lot less complicated than making masks on top of the existing painting I find it a lot less complicated to just paint and erase in the original painting and get comfortable doing that because it, it helps me feel a bit more connected to the artwork and it's, it helps me to maintain a, a connection that it's, it's an expression, not so much a completely mechanical exercise. All of these details here I'm, I'm doing on the original layer with the exception of the eyebrows I just brought in there. So eyebrows are one detail that I tend to do on a, on a layer above just because it affects so much of the shading area above the eyes. I like having the flexibility to adjust my rendering levels underneath the eyebrow and it makes it easier to then apply the eyebrow and merge it in knowing I can I can always delete it and start again without having to re-render the section so that's a that's a great area where using layers is very ideal Other than that, most of this painting is done purely on the original layer and I'm just assessing here if I'm okay with the lighting or I need to do some more experiments. I'll start playing with the background light here and this is in the background layer. So along with adding new layers on top, it's helpful to have that one underlying layer underneath where you're painting over so that you can have flexibility to play with the background light 
And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm playing with the background layer, the, the lowest level layer, and I'm changing the colors dynamically just to see how it interferes with the color temperature inside of the character. So for a quick recap, we essentially talked about using layers when you want to experiment, using layers when you want to try some glazing effects or apply glazing effects, and then also making sure the background layer is on its own layer from the beginning of the painting. If the goal is to improve your painting skill, staying on one layer for as long as possible is your best route as it will force you to fix the painting as you go along and get much more faster and efficient at doing so. This video was a request from a friend who now owes me two gold coins. <laughs> Little inside joke. Um, but if you guys have any suggestions, or you want to share your thoughts, let me know in the comment section, drop me a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.